Africa, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Tonight, with Elliot Nugent as our star, Cavalcade presents a new radio play written especially for us by Cave and Riper. It is called The War Comes to Dr. Morgan. Its story is pertinent to our times and to all of us. A story of a Midwestern physician faced with the problem of deciding where lies his first duty, in his home community or on the field of battle. Starring Elliot Nugent in The War Comes to Dr. Morgan on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Our story tonight begins in the shambles of what was once a native hut in the Solomons. Under the crossfire of a Jap gun hidden in the jungle and a Jap destroyer lurking near the shore, two Marines and a doctor, caught in the trap, wait to see how their luck turns. Hey, you there, Corporal. Don't monkey with that tourniquet. Oh, no, sir. I guess I got you to thank for my arm, ain't I? Uh, and me with this hole through my gullet. A couple of lucky guys you're here, Doc. Oh, stop it. It's just a... go nuts waiting for them Japs to get close enough to pick us off. Fine talk from you that's been dodging New York taxis for your 21 years. <laughs> Where'd you come from, Doc? Small town. Drafted? Nope, volunteered. I went through a war to get here. Yeah? <laughs> How come? Oh, it started on a fall day when I took my girl on a picnic. A picnic? Get him. <laughs> sure. I like picnics. Oh, it was September, kind of a gray day, the Middle West gets with smoke in the air. We left our offices early. You see, uh, she's a reporter on our county paper. Her dad's the editor. We were sitting at a wooden table in the picnic ground by the lake. I remember Annie turned to me and said... Oh, gosh. Pine Lake's so beautiful, isn't it? Is that what you're thinking? Hmm? Oh. I had a letter from Doc Andrews today. Somewhere in the Pacific. Oh? You did? He says they need doctors badly. Lives to be saved right there on the spot. Yes, but... But you told me, I mean... Well, Dad ran it in the paper. The medical board said you were needed here. They won't let you go. They will if I'm willing to be replaced or if I find someone to take over my practice. But, darling, if this is your place... If this is what you're supposed to do... You... Listen, Annie, I need your help. Grandpa Morgan was the first doctor in this town. Dad was the second. Even when he gave me those years abroad to study, I still wanted to come back here and live and practice. When Dad died last year, I knew he died contented because I was taking his place, watching over the people we both love. How can you love us if you want to go? But, you see, you're my stake, Annie. You and Pineville. That's why I've got to go. Why, darling, I thought you'd be the first one to... To pat you on the back? I can't do it. I won't. Annie, are you crying? No, I'm not. But I'm afraid. Yes, that's the truth. I'm afraid you'll never come back. I don't get it. Well, you've been the bravest woman I've ever known about everything else. Please. Don't hurt me, Jim. But... But you've got to tell me why. Because I've... I, I've felt secure with you... I've dared to trust the future with you. But now you're going away of your own free will. Jim, I can't face the chance of... I can't bear it. But, Annie, darling, that's a personal, selfish fear. It isn't like you. I can't help it. Annie, you shouldn't force me to make a decision like this. I can't help it, Jim. That's the way I feel. Well, suppose I were to say, even though my heart breaks for you, darling... I haven't any choice. Well, then I'd rather finish it now. Call me a coward. Call me anything you like. I. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, don't go. Darling, I've got to. You won't change your mind. Don't you see? I can't. Why, hello, Anne. Hello, Ella. 
How's the sewing coming? Oh, just going to Miss Judson's to finish her black satin. My, you look a little palish. Uh, I uh, think Dr. Morgan's going to volunteer for army service. You don't say. You going to be married before he goes? No. Duty comes first. But don't tell anyone, will you? Who, me? Why, Anne, you know I never talk. Of course, I suppose if his patients protest enough. Uh, well, I'll be seeing you, Ella. Dr. Morgan's office. Well, um, uh, he's in consultation right now, Miss Haynes. I'll have him call when he can. You're welcome. Goodbye. You're a great liar, Emily, but what am I going to do? Everybody in Pineville County's been on that phone. They're giving you the business, Doctor, that's what. I wouldn't wonder if somebody even went to the medical board. Oh, they've tried that already. Didn't work. The board said it was up to you. Oh, Doctor, forgive me for coming in. Oh, uh, why, uh, Mr. Judson? Really, I'm in such a state. Oh, my, my heart. Oh, sit right down here, Mrs. Judson. I just didn't hear the bell, but I'm sure you rang it. I'll be at my desk, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've had a pain around my heart so bad. Scarcely any sleep last night. Mr. Judson didn't see how I was actually going to pull through. He even wanted to give me some of his patent medicine. But I stuck to your prescription. Oh, his medicine's harmless. Mr. Judson's made quite a fortune from it. Doctor, what is this we hear about your going into the Army? Why, here we've built our lovely new home, settled down here because we knew we had good medical care. Oh, I'm going to find a successor you'll like much better than me. No, Dr. Morgan, no. Really, no. I'm speaking for Mr. Judson. We must ask you to reconsider. Now, I won't press you for an answer now, but we'll talk to you later. Oh, don't forget I'm going to catch you for dinner one night next week. Mm. Bye, Doctor. Goodbye. Oh, bye, Emily. Goodbye. Mr. Grant's waiting. Oh. Ask him to come in. Mr. Grant, come in, please. Hello, Henry. Hi, Doc. Sit down. What have you been up to? Oh, what's that bandage mean? Doing the last of the thrashing yesterday. Caught my hand in the dang thing. Mm-hmm. So I see. Well, why didn't you call me when it happened? I couldn't. Running short-handed. Oh, darn you anyway for not calling me last night. Look at that hand. You know, Jim, when you first come back from Europe, we didn't know if he was going to be our doc or not. But the first time he come out, you started to help me clean out the barn. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. <laughs> Steady now. This uh, this might hurt a little. Hurt away. I knew right then he was a Morgan, all right. Don't think we could use a doc around here that didn't have a little farm smell around him. <laughs> Pineville's touchy that way. What are you trying to tell me, Henry? That we need you here. The board says you can stay, and we aren't going to welcome no stranger. Have I ever told you how to run your farm? No. <laughs> You're touchy, too. Just like your paw. But we mean it, Doc. Hi there, Amos. Well, come in, Doc. Come in, come in. Have a chair. Just put the paper to bed. How's your homely daughter? Dispositions like chain lightning. Strikes anywhere, everywhere without warning. Mm. I suppose you know that some people in town don't speak to me anymore. And the ones who never liked me anyway say they knew I didn't have the town's interests at heart. Yeah. They always tote that old chestnut out. Where do you stand in this? Me? Are you Anne's dear papa? Or are you the editor of the Pineville Journal? Yeah, I know. I, I haven't commented on this editorial. Eh? Dodging home issues? After all, Jim, she is my daughter. What about me? I'm losing my woman, my wife. What do you suppose I've gone through trying to do what I think's right? Yeah, I know that. Amos, it doesn't make sense. Millions of women are sending their men to the front with smiles. What's the basis of this fear? Well, I've got a guess. When she was away at school, a kid of 18, she came home for summer vacation, a different person. Almost a state of shock. Huh? Couldn't say a word. Nearly drove me and her mother crazy. But you know how stubborn she is. She's never to this day told me about it. You think you might try it? She won't even see me. She won't even talk to me over the phone. Well, she would if you said that you'd change your mind. Can't do it. I'm going, and, and that's why I want your help. Well, just what would you want me to do? 
I want the Pineville Journal to go all out on a campaign of civilian health, like personal letters, from me if necessary, on diet, exercise, proper rest. Mm. We need a big drive to recruit every grown-up for first aid courses so everybody can take care of minor accidents and injuries. Prevention, Amos. If we can educate our people to take the best of care of themselves, I won't feel so worried about leaving them. Mm. <clears throat> Cigarette? No, thanks, not now. Now then, there's there's the business of my successor. Picked anybody? Yep. Henry Grant suggested him, though he didn't know it. Who is he? A man I first met abroad, Dr. Hugo Altman of Paris. Refugee doctor. Whoa, Jim. Whoa, oh, whoa, Amos, whoa, Amos, Jim. for Pete's sake, I'm so sick of that word refugee. What else were the Mayflower passengers? Let's call him an emigre doctor, if you like. Well, I think I'm as broad-minded as any man, but... Sure, I... but... Now, listen, there's room here for all of us. That's the idea America's built on. You're going to run into a lot of prejudice, son. Oh, what's prejudice? It's fear. What does a child do? Things that are new and strange, he thinks have a kind of mysterious power. So he's afraid of being pushed out by the newcomer. It's a throwback to childhood if people would only realize it. True. I loathe fear, Amos. I, I loathe what it does to good, decent people. Your dad felt that way, too. You're darn right he did. <laughs> Didn't a bunch of good farmers get so scared that they tried to tar and feather Grandpa Morgan when he started vaccinating? <laughs> oh, don't get me started about fear. I've, I've looked into too many sick hearts as well as sick bodies. I've seen how it cripples and twists. And you think I'm not tasting the gall of supreme irony? Amos, fear is standing between me and the only woman I've ever loved or ever will love. Well... I... Oh, Amos, you've got to help me fight the good fight. Dr. Altman's the man for our people. What makes you think so? <laughs> He's the most like my dad of any man I ever met. His father was a farmer in southern Austria. He knows all about people who live in counties like ours. How old is he? Well, he's about 60. He's just passed our state board. Now's the time to grab him. Oh, come on, Amos. Take that fat lead pencil of yours and... And write one of those editorials that have been leading us for 30 years. I guess you're right. These days, a man has to be a citizen first and a father second. Otherwise, he's apt to find himself without his country or his family. your coffee, Dr. Altman. That local train from the city is murder. Oh, my friend, uh, it is luxury compared to some trains. Thank you. Doctor, uh, I'd like to inquire after Mrs. Altman. Dead, my dear young friend. Dead? You know, we went from Vienna to Paris, so when the Germans invaded Paris, too, she set up a canteen for the people. She was machine gun. Oh, horrible. Uh, forgive me. Of course. What about... Professor Durand. Shot himself. And the Gestapo man. Ah, but no, there is no use to talk of things that happened. In a little corner of your mind, you would say impossible. Propaganda, of course. It cannot be otherwise in this great, beautiful country, untouched by bombs. I pray it always stays that way. Amen. Now, Doctor, before you present me to your patients, we must discuss our contract. Contract? I understand that everything is done here by contract, oh. so there is one clause I insist upon. Well? It must be clearly understood here and now that when you return, I go. That is my last and final word. I am immovable. <laughs> well, all right. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but thanks. Thanks very much. Not at all. Uh, your town does not want you to leave, hmm? What makes you say that? Uh, the young lady at the train, the one who came to interview me, uh, she seems so to dislike my coming here. She's my fiancé. Oh. Correction, she... my former fiancé. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, I'll tell you the truth. She doesn't want me in the war, paralyzed by fear. She won't talk to me about it, but... But frankly, doctor, I think it's a kind of phobia, and my hands are tied. Couldn't even stop her making trouble in town, trying to keep me home. Can you weather trouble, Doctor? I can always try. Good. Then let's start now. I'd like you to meet your new patients as soon as possible. You 
are listening to The War Comes to Dr. Morgan, starring Elliot Nugent on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Young Dr. Morgan, played by Elliot Nugent, is torn between what he feels is his duty to his country and his fiancée's unreasoning fears for his safety. As our play continues, he is taking his successor to call on his patients, already aroused against the newcomer. I'm awful sorry, Dr. Morgan, but Mrs. Yotz and she isn't home this afternoon. She, she isn't here. But I saw her myself oh. as we drove... Oh, I see. I see, Hilda. All right, thank you. Come, Dr. Altman. Assuredly. Sorry, Doctor. <laughs> No, 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 my friend. I know what I am talking about. For 59 years, I have known this pig intimately. I was born on a farm. The Berkshire hog is a superior animal. But the you... Berkshire eats his head off, and what you get? I will tell you oh, what you get. Look, I, I hate to break up this debate, but Henry, if Dr. Altman is going to look at your hand, we'll have to go up to the house right now. We're due back in town for a first aid lecture. Well, I tell you, Doc, it's been a pleasure to meet you, and I know we're going to get along fine. But the truth is... My wife, she... Well, there's some kind of a female ruckus going on around town. I tell you, let me come in and see you next week at the office. Monday? Yeah, Monday uh, or Tuesday. Mm. Do you mind if we sit in here in the sunroom, Dr. Altman? Oh, not at all, Miss Barlow. It's very pleasant. Yes. My mother did her sewing and embroidery here. We kept the chintzes and her flowering plants. I suppose Dr. Morgan sent you. Indeed, he did not. Dr. Morgan is in the city. He is? His orders came unexpectedly. He is in the city attending to his final papers. Final papers? He returns here tomorrow, and instead of leaving in four weeks, as he thought, he leaves tomorrow night. But I can't believe it. I, I never thought he... You never thought he would actually go? No, I guess I didn't. I've hoped all along we could... Force him to stay? You didn't answer. I know. Uh, where is he in the city? I'm going to telephone him. I've got to see wait, him. Wait, wait, Miss Barlow. Do you think he wants to see you? What? Well, what do you mean? Well, here is a young man who knows the terrible life and death battle going on all over the world. Deliberately turning his back on his private life, his own interests, and going away into a very real danger. Don't say that. Why must you say that? And here you are, his enemy. The one who's fought to keep him here by any means. He loves you. But he hates what you have done. I've been afraid. He's told me something about you. That is why I am here. Oh, perhaps he used words. But no one could tell what... No. I know what it is to feel fear. No, not mine, you don't. Do you think I don't see how I must appear to you? To the rest? As though I were blind to what's going on today? As though my personal grief outweighed the world? Oh, don't you see? It isn't that. It's the, that I'm helpless. I'm not free to be what Jim wants. But that fear, I do know. When I was a young intern, one of my first patients in the hospital was a young girl. She like a flower. I fell in love with her. And day by day, I watched her die. Did you? Then you do know. And did it... Did it paralyze you? Yeah. For months. Did you cry? No. I couldn't. No, nor I. I just sat and stared at nothing. When? When? When I was not quite 18. I'd fallen in love, young love. It was so wild, disastrous too, because... Because one day... One day what? Tell me. Was the girl you loved laughing and gay? That is what hurts so. Oh, yes, I know. That's what... You see, I couldn't believe that anyone so alive could be dead. He was going to meet me. And that very afternoon, we were going to get our license. It was all very young, and crazy, romantic. We had luncheon in a funny little hamburger joint. And then we stopped. And he brought me a white rose. I can't bear them. They make me sick. And he kissed me goodbye. He was going home to pack, and I was. He stepped off the curb and started out into the street. And, and then he turned to smile at me. But the car, 
I saw the car and I, I tried to scream. I swear I tried to scream. Why didn't I scream and save him? Why? Don't let him smile at me. Dear God, make him stop smiling at me. But the car struck him. Yeah, yeah. Don't let him smile at Try me. Try it out, every bit. Every bad breath. Every feeling of pain. <laughs> Dr. Altman, yeah. are you sure Gus wanted to see me now? After all, I've got just a couple of hours before train time. Oh, please, doctor. He said he'd been janitor at the high school where you attended. Uh, we have to go through the gymnasium. Just a peaceful. Oh, all right. Matter of fact, I'm kind of glad to say goodbye to somebody. Oh, naturally. I've walked this path so many times. So? Oh, yeah, all the town meetings were held here. <laughs> Last one, they even made me speak. <laughs> Why, such a lot of back slappings. Well, times change. But men of principle do not, as you have proved. Uh, uh, you open the door. After you, my dear friend. Thank you. Didn't think that we'd let you leave without giving us a speech, did you? Come oh, on, but look here, right wait a minute. Who did this? I mean, have a chair, have a chair, Jim. Quiet, everybody. <laughs> First, Mrs. Harwell Glaber Judson. As president of the Pineville Women's Association, I wish to welcome Dr. Altman to our fair little city and to wish our dear Dr. Morgan good luck and God's peace. <laughs> Now, now may I present the chairman of the reception committee. Thank you, Dad. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank Mrs. Judson and Mrs. Grant, whom I appealed to last night and who rose so valiantly to the occasion. And I thank all the ladies who helped trim the gymnasium and furnish the supper on such short notice. <laughs> Dr. Morgan's... Wedding will take place immediately after the speeches. You're all invited. Annie, Annie, darling. This... No more fear. The future's ours. I'll tell you what happened when we're on the train. Well, well, and now, 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 if my daughter will kindly release that poor trapped young man from her stranglehold, <laughs> we, we'd like to hear what he has to say. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Amos. If I if I can catch my breath, I... <laughs> well, you know... You know, as I look at all of you, so... So many pictures flash through my mind. Like the apple trees blooming in our orchard. And those babies of yours that Dad helped bring into the world, and the ones I did. The new fire engine and the sacrifices we had to make to buy it. The time we all got mad at Amos's editorials on state inspection of fruit. <laughs> well, the, the pasture back at Sloan's barn where the kids always find the first spring violets. Tonight, I've, I've got every sight and smell and sound of Pineville inside me. You know why I'm going. I'll leave with a clear conscience because I, I'll leave a fine man in my place. You'll always be with me. Every one of you walked in the procession that carried my dad to the graveyard... Every one of you shook my hand when I first hung out my shingle. So I don't say goodbye. Only God keep you and bless you. Gosh, darling, I... I don't even have a wedding bouquet for you unless... Well, look, Mrs. Judson shoved this into my buttonhole. Will you, will you marry me carrying just one white rose? Uh, of course, darling. It'll be the most beautiful bouquet in the world. Why, Jim, you're shaking. Well, I don't mind telling you. This is once in my life I'm scared to death. <laughs> Now, the 
star of tonight's cavalcade, Elliot Nugent. Thank you. We hope that you enjoyed our play on Cavalcade tonight, but we hope even more that you'll remember it not only as a half hour of radio entertainment, but as an example every American can follow in making it possible to relieve physicians for the war effort. Just staying healthy at home will help save lives on the battlefronts of the world. Thank you. You've probably never heard of a little New York tailor named Hercules Mulligan. But if it had not been for his wits, George Washington might never have led his Continental Army to victory. Next week on Cavalcade, DuPont presents the celebrated character actor, Edmund Gwen, as Hercules Mulligan in a new radio play, The Plot to Kidnap General Washington, a comedy melodrama suggested by the distinguished American writer, Carl Carmer. Be with us next week when Cavalcade presents Edmund Gwen as Hercules Mulligan in The Plot to Kidnap General Washington, an exciting story of intrigue and adventure. On tonight's program, the part of Ann Barlow was played by Arlene Francis. The orchestra and musical score were under the direction of Don Vuries. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from our sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program has come to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.